Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to a brand new episode of Roundup. As promised, we're back with brand new, fun and interesting segments from around the world. And there is a lot to get through, so let's dive straight in. Up first, we have the headlines. Twitter has denied that emails alleged to be linked to millions of its users' accounts were obtained using a hack. In a statement, it wrote, there is no evidence. The data came from a flaw in its systems. The firm which raised the alarm about the alleged leaks, Hudson Rock, said it disputed Twitter's findings. On January 11th, Mexico and Canada signed a Memorandum of Understanding to support both countries' indigenous peoples. In the document, both parties expressed their willingness to work together for the equity and inclusion of Mexican and Canadian indigenous communities. Uganda on January 11th declared the end of a nearly four-month Ebola outbreak that it briefly struggled to contain, but was then able to swiftly bring under control despite the absence of a proven vaccine against the viral strain in question. The latest outbreak killed 55 of the 143 people, according to health ministry figures. In Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, artist Patrick Sermwami wades knee-deep through a mountain of plastic bottles, scooping as many as he can into a large sack to melt down the plastic. He uses these to paint portraits of politicians as an act of condemnation of what he says is their inaction to protect the environment. Scientists working on preserving Australia's Great Barrier Reef have successfully trialed a new cryopreservation method. Cryogenically frozen coral can be stored and later reintroduced to the wild, but the current process requires sophisticated equipment, including lasers. As you all know, the news is full of interesting stories about what's happening in the world. And there's always something new or an update on an ongoing issue. Likewise, we here at Roundup are going to bring you a report on the ongoing situation in Afghanistan since the Taliban takeover. We'll be covering the recent issue of women's rights. Let's have a look. The Taliban is continuing to place restrictions on the basic rights of women in Afghanistan. After the United States withdrew its forces from the country in 2021, the Taliban took control and promised to respect the rights of women and allow them to freely pursue an education. We will give every right to, to the female members of our society that comprise half the population, uh, their right to work, their right to education, and every single other right uh, that has been afforded to them uh, in, the, uh, in Islam. But in today's Afghanistan, girls aren't allowed to study beyond primary school which is about the age of 11 or 12 years old. That's how old some of you are. The curriculum has also been changed by the new government to become more focused on religion. And just a few weeks ago, the Taliban placed a ban on women attending university, which sparked widespread condemnation from around the world, including from Muslim countries such as Saudi Arabia, Qatar and Turkey. Here's what some of the women told Channel 4 News. I heard about the news today and I genuinely felt awful. I tore up all my notebooks. This isn't a life worth living. They're not letting us study. They're not letting us attend university. They're not letting us go to school. I came now to enroll, but they didn't let me in. I can't express in words how I'm feeling right now. No one can understand my pain. When I got close to the university, it was a really difficult thing to see. The Taliban were standing at the entrance and were acting so rudely, saying, go home, girls have no right to study anymore. Women have also been banned from basic leisure activities like going to parks and gyms and can't travel long distances without a male family member and are banned from having most jobs which require travelling outside the home. The country's health is in dire trouble and more than 90% of Afghans are food insecure, meaning they don't have enough food. A few months ago, an Afghan MD asked Hazur what would happen to the country. Here's what Hazur said. When the 
जब सारे अहमदी वहाँ से निकल आएंगे तो भाई की इंतहा जब आ जाएगी तो फिर हो सकता है उनमें से कोई ऐसा शख्स खड़ा हो जो दोबारा उसको संभालने लगे और फिर मजहबी आज़ादियाँ पैदा हों और फिर अहमदीत का नफूज वहाँ हो फिर आगे मुस्तबिल दोबारा नए सिरे से बेहतर हो सकता है इस वक्त तो कोई मुस्तबिल नहीं नज़र आ रहा ठीक है बस आप यहाँ बैठे हैं आप दुआ करते रह करें आपको हम दर्दी है ना आपका मुल्क है है ना तो बस फिर आपसे ज़्यादा कौन दुआ कर सकता है उसके लिए The Taliban are religious extremists and have a false and distorted understanding of Islam. Afghanistan's higher education minister Nida Mohammed Nadim defended the ban on universities saying it was necessary to prevent gender mixing and because women were not wearing the hijab. Here's why they're not following Islamic principles. Islam doesn't allow anyone to force a woman to wear the hijab. The Holy Prophet of Islam وسلم, made it obligatory on every Muslim man and woman to seek an education. By preventing Afghan women from learning, they're going against the teachings of Islam. Muslim women in early Islam fought in battles, tended to the wounded and were learned scholars. The Holy Prophet وسلم, even had races with his wife Hazra Aisha and watched spear fighting exhibitions. The Holy Prophet ﷺ championed the rights of women and encouraged them to seek knowledge. But today, the Taliban are doing the exact opposite. Tazakla for bringing us this insightful report. And with that said, let's now go to Islamabad. We'll be listening to the latest Friday sermon summary. Assalamu alaikum, my dear brothers and sisters. During this week's Friday sermon, Hazur Aydul Atala bin Asil Aziz continue to relate accounts regarding the companions of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hazur Aydullah Ta'ala bin Asil Aziz said that today he would first highlight the life of Hazrat Abdullah bin Jash Did you know the title of Muhajir is given to those who followed the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from Mecca to Medina during the Hijrah and the Ansar were the believers from Medina. Hazur Aydullah Ta'ala bin Asil Aziz so the Hazrat Abdullah bin Jash Anhu, was from the Banu Asad tribe. He was of average height and had thick hair. Once he was appointed as the leader of the expedition and the Holy Prophet وسلم, spoke about him, saying that Abdullah bin Jash Anhu, was patient and fearless. It is recorded that Abdullah bin Jash Anhu, was the first to carry the Islamic flag and the first time in Islam that spoils were obtained was during the expedition which he led. Beloved Hazur Aydullah Ta'ala bin Asil Aziz said that Hazrat Abdullah bin Jash Anhu, sword broke on the day of Uhud. It was then that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam granted him a branch from a date tree called Urjun, which became like his sword. From that day, he became known by the title Urjun. Hazrat Abdullah bin Jash Anhu, was also martyred during the Battle of Uhud. He had been married to Hazrat Zainab bin Khuzayma. After his martyrdom, when she became a widow, she later married the Holy Prophet ﷺ. In this week's Friday sermon, Hazur Aydullah Talib bin Asil Aziz said that the next companion he would mention was Hazrat Saleh Shukran Anhu. According to some, it is recorded that the Holy Prophet ﷺ received him as inheritance from his father. Then, after the Battle of Badr, the Holy Prophet ﷺ freed him. Hazur Aydullah Ta'ala bin Asil Aziz said that after the demise of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hazrat Saleh Razlat Al-Anhu had the honor of being among those who washed the blessed body of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hazur Aydullah Ta'ala bin Asil Aziz said that the next companion he would mention is Hazrat Malik bin Dukshim Razlat Al-Anhu. Hazur said that during the Battle of Uhud, when the false rumor Regarding the passing of the Holy Prophet Wasallam had spread, Hazrat Malik bin Dukshim Anhu, passed by wounded companions, asking them if they had heard about the martyrdom of the Holy Prophet Wasallam. They responded to him, saying that even if this were to be true, God is still alive and he should continue fighting. Another companion that Hazur mentioned was Hazrat Ammar bin Yasir Anhu. It is recorded that once the Holy Prophet ﷺ passed by Hazrat Ammar and found him crying. 
He said that the opponents beat him terribly until he said something against the Holy Prophet The Holy Prophet asked what was actually in his heart. Hazrat Ammar responded that he had strong faith in his heart. The Holy Prophet said that if this was the case, then Allah would forgive what he said with his mouth. Towards the end of the sermon, Hazur Aidullah Ta'ala bin Asil Aziz mentioned the tragic martyrdom of nine Ahmadi Muslims in Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso Dear brothers and sisters, this was just a very brief summary of last week's Friday sermon, which was filled with many interesting stories and incidents. We hope you are able to hear the full sermon, which can be found on mta.tv. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah for that summary. Similar to how we're fortunate enough to listen to Hazur in his weekly Friday sermons, we also have the blessings to communicate with Hazur whenever and wherever we want. We can do this by sending him letters. And in our upcoming report, we take a look at the blessings of writing letters to Hazur Aidullah Ta'ala bin Asil Aziz. I'm sure everybody at home would love to learn how to do this. Have you ever wondered why writing letters to beloved Hazur is so important? Or why we should try to make a habit of writing letters to Hazur? Well, let me tell you. Did you know in the olden days, people used to write letters to their loved ones? Most of the time, these letters would be posted to those who either lived far away or those who one couldn't meet every day. As there weren't many other means of instant communication as there are today, writing and posting letters was a very popular way to keep in touch. Now, whilst writing letters to beloved Hazur is not obligatory, it is a great way to build a strong relationship with Hazur. Keeping in regular touch with our beloved Hazur helps us to become motivated and to grow in our spiritual successes. As in each letter, we would like to tell beloved Hazur our achievements. It has been stated that once the everlasting bond is made, the believers get a high sense, respect and love for Hazur Anwar, which is naturally created within their hearts. Another reason why we are encouraged to write letters to Hazur is to increase the acceptance of our prayers. Since Hazur is loved by Allah, our belief is that Allah listens and accepts his prayers. We are so blessed to have the opportunity that wherever we are in the world, we can write and send letters to beloved Hazur. This is a great way to feel instant comfort. Once, Hazrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmed, Khalifat al Masih II, Razanat al Anho, expressed his relationship between the Khalifa and his people in very painful, compassionate, and powerful words. He states, You have someone who has true sympathy for you, who truly loves you, who considers your pain and sufferings to be his own, and who is always praying to Allah for you. Once a Jamia student in Canada asked beloved Hazur about those who didn't write to Hazur regularly because they believe it might be time consuming as Hazur already has a very busy schedule. Let us have a look at this clip taken from the Mullagat and listen to Hazur's response in this regard. <laughs> ये बाज़ दफ़ा 
اگر تو حقیقت میں یہ ہے اور وہ ایسے شخص پھر دعا ضرور کر رہے ہوں میرے لیے ہیں ٹھیک ہے نا کم سے کم دو نفل تو پڑھتے ہو نا پھر ایسے شخص دعا کر کے لیکن وہ بھی نہیں دعا بھی نہیں کر رہے اور خط بھی نہیں لکھ رہے تو پھر تعلق نہیں قائم ہو سکتا ٹھیک ہے اگر تو لمبے لمبے خط لکھو نہ لکھو ایک دو صفحے کے لکھو مہینے میں یا ایک یا دو خط لکھو تعلق قائم ہو یہ بھی پتہ ہو یہ کہانیاں لمبی لکھنے کے بجائے ہیں بلکہ بلکہ کام کی بات بھی لکھنی ہو تو مختصر خط لکھنا چاہیے نہیں تو ہمیشہ جماعتی طور پہ بھی ذاتی طور پہ بھی جو قریب حسین سالس کو وزیر آبے کو خط لکھا کرتا تھا تو پہلے سوچتا تھا کہ کیا مضمون ہے اور پھر یہ سوچتا تھا کہ چار پانچ لائنوں سے زیادہ کا خط نہیں ہونا چاہیے تاکہ اس ان کی نظروں کے سامنے آ جائیں اور سارے پوائنٹ سامنے آ جائیں اس کا جواب بھی آ جاتے ہیں تین سو خط لکھو گے تو وہ میری ڈاک کی ٹیم کو چلا جائے گا وہ خلاصہ ایک لائن کا بنا کے اس کو مجھے دے دیں گے ٹھیک اور ہو سکتا ہے کہ اس جو خلاصہ وہ بنائیں اس میں وہ پوائنٹ نہ نکال سکیں جس کو تم ہائی لائٹ کرنا چاہتے ہو اس لیے مختصر بات کرنی چاہیے If you haven't written a letter to beloved Huzoor recently, make sure you write one today so that you can express your love towards him. May Allah the Almighty strengthen our beloved Huzoor's hands and make us his helpers. Ameen. Jazakallah for that report. You know, Ghani, after this episode, we should write a letter to Huzoor, Aydha Lahu Ta'ala, Bin Asil Aziz as well. You know what, Nasir, that sounds like a brilliant idea. In fact, I say all our viewers at home should try and take some time out today and write a letter to Huzoor, Aydha Lahu Ta'ala, Bin Asil Aziz. You know, last month, Guardian held its 127th annual Jalsa Salana. And what if we told you we have another exclusive report lined up for you today? That's right. Let's go and have a look. Guardian, Bharatir Punjab Rajoy Guldaspur Jelai, Abos Tito Akti Chotto Shahor. Amadi Musulman de Junno, Esa Hurti, Unatomo Pobito Stan. Aslava like Waramatilla. Ami Mute Guardian del Sagate Achi, Ekane Hadar Hadar Manusasen, Guardian del Satajogite. Mohana Lani Deshe, Atose Ekanobu Shale, Potom Jensha, Unastitohai, Potom Jensha Matro, Potato Jun, Soba Guban Ubusti Chilen. Eva Cho Shanti Risti Des Teke. छयटी আন্তর্জাতিক ভাষায় তিনটি বুথ থেকে সরাসরি অনুবাদ করা হয়েছে এছাড়াও জলসার সম্পূর্ণ আয়োজন এম টি এ ইন্ডিয়া থেকে উর্দু ভাষা এবং বাংলাদেশে ইউটিউব চ্যানেলে বাংলা ভাষায় সরাসরি সম্প্রচার করা হয়েছে ইমাম বর্ধক জলসার বিভিন্ন বক্তৃতা ছাড়াও বাড়তি আকর্ষণ হিসাবে থাকছে কাদিয়ানের বিভিন্ন ঐতিহাসিক স্থান পরিদর্শন যেমন মিনারাতুল মসি মসজিদ মুবারক মসজিদ আকসা বাইতুদুয়া বেহস্ত মকবিরা ইত্যাদি আসুন দেখে নেওয়া যাও কীভাবে অতিথিদের আপ্যায়ন করা হচ্ছে এই দিনগুলোতে কাদিয়ানের বাসিন্দাদের আন্তরিক আতিথিয়তা লক্ষ্য করা যায় জলসা উপলক্ষে বিভিন্ন বিভাগ বিভিন্ন বিষয় প্রদর্শনীর আয়োজন করে আমি আল্লাহর মহান অনুগ্রহে কাদিয়ান জলসাতে অংশগ্রহণ করেছি আমি আশা করি দোয়া করি তোমরাও যেন এই সৌভাগ্য পেতে পারো as I recently held the Jalsa Salana. Let's go have a look.
ये जलसा हमारा ये दिन बरकतों के खुदा की इनायत और शफकतों के ये जलसा हमारा ये दिन बरकतों के खुदा की इनायत और शफकतों के ये जलसा हमारा Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi My name is Bashirin Mahmoud Omoeli. My name is Afno Rafan. It is indeed a blessing to be part of Jalsa Sarana again after a break of three years due to the global pandemic. This is the 68th edition of the Jalsa Sarana Nigeria, held at the Ahmadiyya Conference Ground, Ode Road, Ilaro, Obo State, from 23rd to 25th of December 2022. Jalsa Sarana is the annual convention of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, started by the Promised Messiah in the year 1891. The primary purpose of the convention is to enable every sincere individual to personally experience religious benefits. That they may enhance their knowledge and those that have been blessed and enabled by Allah, the exalted. Their perception of Allah may progress. Justice Solana also promotes mutual introduction among all brothers and strengthens the fraternal ties within the community. The theme of this year's Justice Solana is Allah and the Asma al Prisna. That is Allah and His beautiful names. Now, join us as we take it through the Justice proceedings. This year's Jalsa Salana has witnessed the presence of several dignitaries and featured several soul-inspiring lectures, recitations from the whole Quran, and poems in praise of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Offering of Thaji prayers, presentation of academic merit awards to members who performed excellently academically, exhibition of Jamal Digital and projects. Members also had the opportunity to listen to the last Friday sermon delivered by His Holiness, Hazrat Khalifatul Mahsi V. May Allah be his helper. The hallmark of the Jalsa was a special Jalsa message sent by beloved Huzur to Nigeria Jamaat, which was read to the Jalsa participants by respected Amir Saib of Ahmad Abdiya Muslim Jamaat Nigeria, Al Hajj Alatoye Falansho Abdul Aziz. Here is the registration unit where all participants are registered. Here is the male's main marquee where participants sit quietly to listen to the Jalsa proceedings. If main marquee is just over there, I am presently inside the exhibition tent where we have literatures of the Jamaat being exhibited as well as copies of the various languages the Holy Quran has been translated into. It might interest you to know that the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jama'a has translated the Holy Quran to more than 70 different languages of the world. There are several other sections at Jalsa, such as the car park, market, and the most important one of all, you know, the kitchen, where some just meals are prepared for the guests of the Promised Messiah, alayhi salam. I am currently at the Review of Religion section, where the Promised Messiah, alayhi salam, published the first English magazine called the Review of Religions, solely for the purpose of propagating Islam to English speakers. Over 28,000 participants attended the sales Jalsa, and believe me, it was indeed a great experience. It's another time, time we come here with, with another interesting report. We say Jalsa Mubarak to you all. Malale Safar Ho Kisi Pe Nagar Dey Jazakallah for that report. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for in today's episode. But don't forget to join us next week when we'll be covering even more interesting topics from around the world. And don't forget to send us your feedback at our email at roundup at mta.tv or leave your comments on our social media. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum. Yeah.